Welcome back to Neuromuscular Physiology on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Make sure to like this video and subscribe for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to go over the process of the action potential. Now, what I have shown here, this is a plasma membrane of an axon. In this video, we're going to talk about the action potential and the processes that go along with propagating it. All right, and we're going to eventually see a graph of how this occurs. Okay, and then also I want to want you to remember is that there are several parts of a neuron. There's the soma, also called the cell body. There are the dendrites and the axon. And the action potential only occurs in the axon. That's something very important to remember. And the way I remember it is action potential starts with an A and axon starts with an A. So action potential goes with the axon. Now, one thing that's very important to understand for us, us ultra clarity in this topic is anytime somebody says potential, that means voltage. Um, in a lot of contexts, those words are used interchangeably. Um, so when you hear arresting membrane potential, that means arresting membrane voltage. That's why you measure it with a voltometer, okay? Because it's, it's and the arresting membrane potential is about negative 70 millivolts, okay? It's because potential is a voltage, okay? So when you hear those two terms, they're often used interchangeably, but they mean the same thing. And unfortunately, they're often both used when talking about graded and action potentials. All right, so to familiarize your, you with what's going on here, the blue protein is going to be the sodium potassium pump, also called the sodium potassium ATPase. The green proteins are gonna be the voltage-gated sodium channels, and the purple proteins are gonna be the voltage-gated potassium channels. Now, to further uh, show what's going on here, up here on top of this membrane, and this is the axon membrane, on top here, this is the extracellular side. Below this membrane down here where my mouse is, this is the cytosolic or intracellular side, okay? And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna unpause this and we're gonna see some stuff, some basic stuff that's going on, and then we'll talk a little bit more about it. The sodium potassium pump we covered in another video. And its function is to ultimately restore the resting membrane potential, which is, which is a number you should memorize, and it's approximately negative 70 millivolts. And we'll go into a little more detail with the sodium potassium pump later. But suffice it to say, the function of the sodium potassium pump is it keeps a large concentration of sodium ions outside the cell in the extracellular space, it also keeps a large amount of potassium ions in the cytosolic area down here. Okay? In fact, when we talk about the relative positions and concentrations of various ions for action potentials, it's very important to understand that at rest, before any action potential, the highest concentration of sodium by far is in the extracellular side. Whereas the highest concentration of potassium ions by far is on the cytosolic or intracellular side, okay? And these two proteins right here, the voltage-gated sodium channels and the voltage-gated potassium channels, they're going to use the process of facilitated diffusion to cause ions to move down their concentration gradient, meaning from an area of high concentration to that of low concentration, okay? And again, the sodium potassium pump's function is to maintain the sodium ion concentration high in the extracellular space and the potassium concentration high in the cytosolic space, okay? And we'll go into the physiology of that more a little later. The main thing we want to focus on are the relative distribution of the charges. Now, outside the cell, we talked about we have sodium. There is also a high concentration of calcium ions and chloride ions. Okay, now even though chloride is negative, we have a lot of sodium and calcium outside the cell. So overall, the net charge outside the cell happens to be more positive. Now you say on the inside, potassium is, is positive also, then why is the inside more negative? That's because on the inside of the cell, we have a large amount of phosphate. Phosphate has a doubly minus charge at physiological pH, and phosphate is the intracellular buffer. 
So there's a lot of phosphate on the inside of the cell and a lot of anionic proteins. So that makes, even though we have positive potassium, the inside of the cell is overall negative. And at rest, this is true. The inside is negative and the outside is positive. In fact, when we measure the resting membrane potential or voltage, we measure it with respect to the inside of the cell. And since it's negative here, that's why we say at rest, the resting membrane potential is about negative 70 millivolts. The key is the negative, and we see the negative buildup of charge out, outside the membrane on the cytosolic side. Okay, let's continue this video. So we have a large amount of positive charge outside the cell and a large amount of negative charge inside the cell. And that's going to be true at rest. All right. In this video, you're going to see periodically this flash of light that's going to be propagating from left to right. That's essentially the action potential. Okay, What we're made to believe is that, in this case, the action potential is propagating from left to right. In fact, the action potential propagates unidirectionally away from the cell body and towards the axon terminal. In this case, that's left to right. Now, if I back up just a little bit, what we'll hopefully see is initially the first step, notice this flash of light passed by this voltage-gated sodium channel. The voltage-gated sodium channel opened, and we see this arrow pointing downwards. That's signifying that sodium is going to move from the extracellular side to the cytosolic side, meaning it's going to diffuse down its concentration gradient. So the sodium will then move from outside to inside, and that leads to a net flux of positive charge inside the cell in this general vicinity. We're going to see this over here. This is a voltage-gated sodium channel, and the voltage, or the change in voltage, causes this channel to open and sodium diffuses through. Now, what is the reason that the channel opens? Well, let's go back a little bit, okay? When this channel opens, and you have to imagine this process is repeated before to the left of this channel. When this channel opens, we know that there is an influx of sodium. There's an influx of positive charge, okay? Notice what's happening in the video. It's positive, it's negative at rest. It's negative at rest, but as soon as this opens, it starts to get a little more positive on the inside of the cell. It turns out that for voltage-gated sodium channels, there's a voltage sensor on the inside of the cell. The sensor for that voltage, the voltage sensor, senses that it's switching from negative to positive on the inside of the cell, and that causes the sodium channel to open. So initially, this one opens, allows positive charge in. The positive charge builds up along here, as we're going to see, and this channel's voltage sensor senses it, and it causes it to open, and sodium fluxes through. See, it senses this positive charge, the channel opens and sodium diffuses through like this. Here's a look at the place of the generation of the action potential, the axon hillock, and here's the action potential propagating from left to right down the axon. So here's what we're going to be looking at here. All right, here's the flash of light, the action potential moving unidirectionally from left to right. That action potential is going to hit this voltage-gated sodium channel. What is the action potential? It's the movement of a positive charge to the inside of the cell, which in this case is the movement of sodium to the inside of the cell. Remember, we talked about how this voltage-gated sodium channel has voltage sensors on this side right here. So it's going to sense the positive charge buildup right here, and it's going to cause it to open. As such, positive charge buildup, this channel opens, sodium diffuses through. That's going to propagate that charge buildup, as you can see right here, to the next voltage-gated sodium channel. The voltage sensor on this voltage-gated sodium channel is going to sense it, the positive charge buildup, and cause this channel to open. And it does. Sodium comes through. And we see more and more positive charge buildup over here. Let's rewind that a little bit. All right. Action potential spreading. What is the action potential? It is the influx of sodium ions, the buildup of positive charge on the inside of the cell. Okay, we have buildup of positive charge. Watch. Buildup of positive. It switches from negative to positive. This voltage sensor on the voltage-gated sodium channel senses that. The channel opens. Sodium comes through. Buildup of more positive charge. That causes this next voltage-gated sodium channel to open. And then sodium comes through. And we're just going to repeat that over and over and over again from left to right in this case. Now, one thing you may have noticed is that it appears that these purple channels, the voltage-gated potassium channels, 
don't really function in line with the action potential. If we go back a little bit, we see the propagation of this action potential. It just goes right through the voltage-gated potassium channels, and they don't really seem to do anything. That's because voltage-gated potassium channels function behind the action potential. Okay, But it turns out that once there is sufficient positive charge on the inside of the cell, there's also a voltage sensor on these potassium channels. Okay, They sense this positive charge on the inside of the cell. And when, when, the, when a certain degree of positive charge builds up, these channels sense that and they open. But this time they're going to allow potassium to efflux from the inside of the cell to the outside. And notice what's happening. There's initially positive in here, but since po potassium is positive and it's moving out, it causes the inside to become more negative again, and consequently the outside becomes more positive. A charge distribution similar to what we had at rest. The only problem now is that all of the potassium ions are outside and the sodium ions are inside. All right, So that's where, why we have the sodium-potassium pump. Notice what this is going to do. It's going to use the power of ATP to move three sodiums out of the cell. And then it will also move two potassiums into the cell. Now I have this video moving in very slow motion with relative to how fast the video actually plays. But I want you to notice several things. Number one, we're going to see the action potential propagate from left to right. Okay, And it doesn't matter whether you look at these proteins on the bottom or on the top. They're both in the membrane. This down here and this up here are extracellular. The inside of the cell is in here. Okay, because the axon is sort of like you could imagine it as a as a tube. Okay. Um, the other things to notice are remember sodium is really high out here. I would just recommend looking at the top up here. Sodium's high out here. Potassium's high inside the cell. The other thing also is remember there's a lot of positive charge outside the cell at rest and negative inside the cell. And what you'll see hopefully. <clears throat> with the movement of that action potential, that flash of light from left to right, is the replacement of these negative charges right here with positive charges. Okay, It's going to be a net buildup of positive charge inside the cell. Now remember, what is the action potential? The action potential literally is the influx of sodium from outside to inside of the cell, and that's what causes the buildup of these positive charges inside the cell. Okay, and that positive charge buildup is what propagates the action potential, the opening of sequential voltage-gated sodium channels down the line. That's what propagates it. All right.